China is expecting to make significant progress in the development of rocket engines in the coming year as it prepares for crewed flights to the moon and other high-profile space missions. Three of the four engines under development are for the next-generation Super Heavy Lift Long March 9 CZ-9, the rocket at the core of China's aspirations to send people to the moon by 2030. The fourth engine under development is for the Long March 9 CZ-9. Additionally, the CZ-9 will be used for future trips to Mars and other interplanetary adventures, since it is about six times more powerful than the Long March 5 CZ-5. When it comes to Chinese launches, there is a common question that arises – how Chinese space rockets work. Another question that comes to mind is why do some Chinese rockets appear to decompose at liftoff, with a large amount of white debris falling off the rocket during the first 30 seconds of flight? This occurs mostly with Chinese previous generation rockets, such as the Long March 2, 3, and 4 in their configurations. Before we begin, please ensure that you've subscribed to our channel. Let's dive in. Several have speculated that the white particles might be chunks of ice, as seen on earlier rockets such as the Saturn V. These Saturn V utilized cryogenic propellants such as liquid hydrogen and oxygen, which can have temperatures as low as minus 200 degrees Celsius, causing a tremendous amount of ice to develop on the rocket as it fell. However, this is not the case with Chinese legacy Long March rockets, since they do not utilize cryogenic fuels throughout the launch process. Thermal insulation tiles are the answer to the enigma of falling white debris. The Chinese use thermal insulation tiles on their rockets in order to keep the interior of the rocket within a specific temperature range. To begin to see why the Chinese rockets in question are the Long March 2 through 4 in their versions, and why these rockets employ hypergolic fuels, namely unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine, often known as UDMH, and nitrogen tetroxide, and opposed to conventional rockets. UDMH has melting points of minus 58 degrees Celsius and boiling points of plus 63 degrees Celsius, while nitrogen tetroxide has melting points of minus 9.3 degrees and boiling points of 21.2 degrees Celsius. So in theory, there is no need for insulation to keep these two components in a liquid state at room temperature. But the problem is that these rockets launch from the launch sites of Zhou Tran Tairun and Chi Chang. In addition to no one at the first two launch locations, Jotron and Taiyan are located deep inland and semi-arid and desert climates, with significant temperature differences between the seasons as well as between night and day. For example, the temperatures can drop well below minus 15 degrees Celsius in the winter and soar well above plus 30 degrees in the summer, depending on the time of year. This is very close to and even past the melting and boiling points of nitrogen tetroxide, and we believe that this is one of the primary reasons why the Chinese employ thermal tiles, to keep the propellant tanks warm or cool when external temperatures are extremely high. That being said, other components such as seals, cables, and servo mechanisms can be adversely affected by high temperatures, and this can result in catastrophic failure. And simply, to give you an illustration, the failure of two O-ring seals on the Space Shuttle Challenger in 1986 was caused by the elastic properties of the O-rings being affected by the record low temperatures at the time of the launch. We know that the long march to F's theoretical operating conditions are no less than minus 20 degrees Celsius, according to a government article from 2005 on the long march rockets. We can expect the other Long March 2 to 4 rockets that are based on the same core technologies to have similar thermal limits, and given the record low temperatures that you've experienced in Zhou Tran and Tiger, it's not surprising if this type of thermal insulation is used on the rocket exterior. It's important to note that the use of these insulation tiles is not necessarily a systematic occurrence. For example, it's much more rare to see these insulation tiles during the Tiger mission, but even in those circumstances, it is common to see the rockets stripped of their insulation foam, revealing details such as the interstage vent holes that would otherwise be hidden. Similarly, at the launch site of Zichang, which is located significantly further south at a latitude of 28 degrees north, it is much more rare to see insulation foam used on the rockets there. Another thing to mention is these insulation tiles are sometimes used on the rocket fairings themselves to improve the thermal stability of the environment where satellites are typically stored. 
The reason for this is that some satellite subsystems and instruments can be very sensitive to temperature and humidity, which is why launch pads generally have air conditioning units to maintain a stable environment inside the fairings, but air conditioning units are not always present on the rocket fairings themselves. In the event of a launch abort, which does occur on occasion, it is necessary to maintain some level of thermal stability with a passive system such as thermal insulation foam until the air conditioning ducts can be reconnected. In a nutshell, sometimes you see Chinese rockets with no insulation foam and other times you see Chinese rockets that are literally covered in insulation foam. Furthermore, it's not always simple to tell the difference before takeoff since the Chinese paint over the insulation foam with the same motifs and patterns that are found beneath the insulation foam. In most cases, you only notice the insulation tiles after the liftoff when these tiles begin to fall off. There is an exception, however, in the case of the interstage vent holes, which I mentioned earlier because while those are indeed concealed by insulation foam, the Chinese do not paint artificial vent holes over them and therefore those are fairly easy to spot. Additional information that we can get you right now about the Chinese rocket technology and launch plan is that the new rocket will use refined RP-1 kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen, building on engines developed for China's newer Long March 5, 6, 7, and 8 rockets. It will come in two variants, a two-stage version to send astronauts to the Chinese space station and a three-stage version with two side boosters for deep space missions. The smaller version will be capable of launching around 30,800 pounds, 14,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit when recovering the first stage, which would allow it to carry a new generation crew spacecraft which had an uncrewed test flight in 2021. It can carry 18,000 kilograms when the first stage is expended. The larger version will be able to launch 59,500 pounds, 27,000 kilograms into lunar transfer orbit. That means it could launch a larger, heavier version of the new crew spacecraft optimized for lunar and deep space missions. Two launches of the rocket could be used for a short-term crewed lunar landing mission, Colts veteran Long March rocket designer Long Lihao said in June 2021. China does not yet have a reusable rocket, meaning it has a number of technology breakthroughs to make first. CASC has, however, stated it aims to convert the Long March 8 first stage to be reusable, while a number of commercial launch companies including Landspace, iSpace, Galactic Energy, Deep Blue Aerospace, and more are working on their own concepts of vertical takeoff, vertical landing rockets. Interesting fact about China's space station is that the Chinese Space Agency on the island of Hainan plans to launch two additional huge space station modules this year, each weighing more than 20 tons at launch, using Long March 5B rockets from the Space Center. The Wentian and Mengtian pressurized modules will be added to the Chinese space station, providing more living space as well as research laboratory capabilities. Also slated to launch to the Chinese space station this year are two Tianzhou cargo freighters on Long March 7 rockets and two Shenzhou crew ferry ships on Long March 2F rockets, both of which are based in Tianzhou. That's it for today. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next one.